Hi, everybody. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by our company, LifeChamp. Today, our webinar's title is Five Steps to Optimize the Performance of Your Stock Portfolio. So, hello, everybody. So, my name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this uh, session. So, our session today is all about portfolio management. How can we, what are the steps that we uh, need to do to optimize our performance, stock performance, right? So, um, as usual, disclaimer, whatever we share in this webinar is only for educational purpose. So, in no way that we are giving you any recommendation to buy or sell any listed securities that we mentioned here. So, if you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risks. So allow me to introduce our speaker today. And our speaker today is a content producer of kclaw.com. He has personally written over 200 articles on kclaw.com. He is also a weekly webinar host and presenter. Uh, besides, besides working for kclaw.com, he is also the co-founder of dividendvault.com and he where he manufactures savvy investors who can build dividend-based portfolios independently. Okay, he himself is a dividend investor. He, in, he primarily invests for dividend income uh, with an average yield of between 2% to 8% per annum. And uh, he is also a, uh, author, an author of three books. So today, we are very honored to have him here in this session to talk about portfolio management, five steps to optimize the performance of your stock portfolio. So Ian, good to see you here today. Hello, Shane. Good to see you. And uh, once again, it's always a privilege of mine to be here speaking to your audience at LifeChamp and as well as on behalf of uh, Bursa Malaysia. So guys, um, I mean to say I've prepared a lot of materials for you. So Shane, I'll just take it through, right? Yes, please. Go ahead. All right. So let me just share screen and uh, we'll get the webinar on the way. So guys, all right. Just for your information today, Although this is actually a webinar session, right? But uh, I will do things a little bit differently today. So Shane will be an active participant of this uh, particular session. All right. Usually I'll be presenting and then Shane will be, will be the host. All right. He will play a passive role, a passive role as a host. But today I believe that uh, he will be more interactive with us. All right. So I will invite him to be my co-host or my co-presenter for this uh, webinar session. Okay. So here's, what we're, so here's what we're gonna do. So all of you guys here, uh, we are gonna play a game, all right? I have actually designed a game uh, for all of you today. So um, let's just uh, play this game together with me for this one hour session. Now, in order to play this game, so what happened is that, um, guys, if you, have a, if you have a smartphone, all right, right beside you, please stand by the calculator uh, function, all right, because they, we are going to do some calculation during this game, okay? And of course, along the way, if you have any questions, please put your questions in the Q&A box. I'm very sure that Shane will be moderating the Q&A session after this. Okay, so guys, this is actually a game, and the purpose of this game is to learn how to optimize a portfolio, all right? So let me just uh, briefly describe how this game actually works, all right, so that we can actually start playing the game uh, right away. So here is actually some description. Number one, imagine yourself as a fund manager. So guys, if you are listening to this webinar session, if you are an if you are an sorry, if you are an attendee today, imagine yourself as an investor, as a fund manager. You will be inheriting a stock portfolio that I purposely designed for this particular session. And your task as a fund manager is to optimize the performance of this stock portfolio. All right. So that is actually the objective of this game. Now, with that, um, here are some rules for this game. Number one, the webinar presenter, which is myself, will be the game master. Okay, so I will be the game master. Number two, you as an attendee, you will be making all the decisions, the investment decisions whether or not to buy, hold, or sell a stock, okay? So I will let you decide, 
on this, or I will let you decide on the buying, holding, and selling decision of all the stocks, okay, for this portfolio. And all these decisions, right, uh, will be made through voting via the chat box. So guys, um, some of you guys have actually uh, say hi to me on the chat box. So use the chat box wisely because we are going to, so for example, if let's say um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually share with you a stock. All right. You can actually put that buy, hold or sell. Okay. So use the chat box wisely. And uh, last but not least, I will actually monitor the both myself and Shane, he will be, we will, we will both monitor the chat box. So what happened is that if we find that um, the majority of the attendees, at least 50% or more of the attendees, um, if let's say most of them say buy, then of course uh, I will actually do the, I will actually help, I, I, will, I will actually do the accounts and then I will do the transaction. I will make a buy transaction for that particular stock. All right, so guys, so far, so, so guys just want to uh, get your feedback. How many of you are okay so far with the, with the house rules and the description of the game? Just type in yes. All right, just, uh, just let me know that I'm doing a good job as a game master. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, fair enough. So with that, let me just move on. Now, here is actually the objective of this portfolio, okay? So, um, okay, so here is actually the game objective, all right? So my purpose of designing this game is to introduce a simple format, okay? So it's actually a very structured process to boost the overall productivity and profitability of a stock portfolio. And this is actually done systematically, logically, and rationally. So after this session, right, what happened is that you will learn the process of optimizing a portfolio so that the... Um, after this, right, you can actually do it by yourself. You can actually assess your own portfolio and then you can start doing this by yourself, all right? So that's why we have this game. All right, so guys, I'm gonna to reveal to you the stock portfolio, all right, that you will be inheriting. So I'm gonna just give you a run through, a very quick run through of this stock portfolio, all right? So here we go. So this is actually the Life Champ portfolio. Okay, as you can see, um, it consists of 10 stocks. So I have actually, uh, all these stocks are actually real stocks listed on Bursa Malaysia. But because we are actually in the education, we are, we are in the education line. So what happened is that we will not reveal the names of these stocks. All right. But these are actual stocks listed on Bursa Malaysia. So they are as follows. So we have A, B, C, but I won't just put them A, B, C, so I'll give them a name. Like for example, the first one is Awesome Berhad, Best Berhad, Cool Berhad, and we have it all the way down to Leopard Berhad, okay? So I will give you the, uh, the following information. The first one is actually the number of units. So the second one will be the cost. So this is actually the price that, that um, the person okay, has actually purchased this stock, all right? So therefore, if let's say we take Awesome Berhad, right? The number of units is 2,300 units. So he bought it at $2.30. So what happened is that um, if you take 2,300 shares times 2 point, times two ringgit and 30 cents, what you will get is actually the total investment made, which is 5,290, okay? So that is the cost. Now, the current price, which is the price as of now. So let's say for Awesome Berhad, it is actually priced at $3.26. And, $3 so what happened is that if you want to know the fair value of this investment, we just take $3.26 times 2,300 shares, and therefore you will have the fair value, okay, which is 7,498. And finally, and uh, next, we will actually, not finally, next, what I will give you is actually the 12 months earnings per share of this of the stocks. They are as followed. The 12 months, the latest 12 months dividends per share, which is listed down as followed. And here, the last column here is the annual dividend income that, that uh, the portfolio is receiving, okay? So guys, all in all, this is actually the summary of the portfolio that you are inheriting. 
It consists of 10 stocks. The total amount of capital invested into building this portfolio is 61,790 ringgit. Currently, the portfolio, um, the 10 stocks, the fair value right now is actually 60,093 ringgit. And when it comes to the annual dividend income, on an annual basis, it will earn or it will generate 1,656 ringgit and 50 cents. So therefore, your overall dividend, your overall dividend yield will be 2.68%. All right, guys. So this is actually the portfolio. If you are clear, just type in clear. So let me know that I'm doing okay here. Ian, when you mean fair value, it actually means market value, right? Yeah, market value. Okay, how about this? I'm going to just put this as market value. All right. So which means to say later we are going to do, later you are going to decide whether to buy, hold or sell. So if you happen to sell, what I will do is that I will just take the market value and I will just liquidate. So if let's say you want to liquidate awesome Bahad, therefore, um, therefore the market value is 7,498. I will just say this will be turned into cash. All right. So that is actually how we play the game. All right, so let's mm. see. I see that uh, there's a person asking what is a DPS. DPS actually means dividend per share. Dividends per share, correct. So which means if you take uh, Awesome Berhad, for example, 2,300 shares, right? The latest 12 months dividends per share is 6 cents. So take 6 cents times uh, 2,300 shares. Therefore, you will have an annual dividend income of 138 ringgit. Yep. So like, for example, Best Berhad, for the last 12 months, it pays no dividends. So despite it, despite having 5,000 shares, therefore, uh, because it, doesn't, it did not pay any dividends, so therefore the annual dividend income here will be zero. Okay, so that is actually, so that is actually how we interpret this uh, portfolio. All right, so what we are going to do is to make, what we are going to do is to optimize this portfolio. That is actually the game. Okay, and uh, you guys are going to do it. I'm just going to be your accounts clerk and your game master. I'll be doing the, I'll help you do all the transaction, but you will be deciding whether to execute the tra transaction or not. All right. So now this is actually the portfolio that you guys will be inheriting. And with that, let's move on. Okay, so the key question here is which of these stocks should I buy, hold and sell in the market? Yes. That one you will decide. Okay, so we so for this webinar, the title of the webinar is five steps to optimize your portfolio. So here, let's go into step number one. Okay, we are about to play the game. So step number one is to set and review the objectives and systems of your stock portfolio. Okay, so jot this down, guys. In if you have a notebook right beside you, jot this down. The first step to actually optimize your portfolio is to set and review the, your own investment objectives and the systems uh, that you use to build your own stock portfolio. This one is actually very important. Why? Because most people, right, when it comes to investing in the stock market, they may not have an objective, they may not have a set objective, and uh, worse so, they may not even have a system in place to help them decide what stocks to buy, what stocks to sell, when they should buy, when they should sell, they have no systems, okay? So the first step is to have an objective and to have systems. So if you don't have one, you should set one. If you have one, if you have objectives and systems, you should review them um, on, a, on a consistent basis, okay? So that's step number one. So over here in this game, the context is actually as follows. Here we are gonna build an investment portfolio. So this is not a, this is not a trading portfolio. This is not a speculating portfolio. This is purely an investment portfolio, okay? Purely investment. So the objective of this portfolio is as followed, okay? It is to accumulate fundamentally solid stocks, okay? So the first criteria is fundamentally solid stocks for their income and cash flow productivity, okay? And this portfolio, right, where we buy stocks is not to trade for the short term, rather is to be hold on to, rather is to be uh, kept for the long term. So long term here refers to new, a number of years and possibly decades. So in, other, so in other words, when you buy a stock, okay, once you buy the stock, it's actually for 
forever, all right? The mindset is like, you want to hold on to this stock forever, for life. We are not here to actually like buy a stock and then sell it in two, three years. Or you want to buy a stock and then you want to sell it in, in two weeks time. That's, that is actually not the game plan, all right? So for this portfolio, this is going to be long-term. Now, so the attitude here is to buy to keep and not to trade. And here is actually the mental picture that all of us should have as a stock investor, which is, so let's start with the investment here. So this is actually your capital. So what we will do is that we will invest in a stock. So to us, a stock is like a business and we tend to hold it for the long term so that we can actually generate recurring income. So this is actually the mental picture. So based on this mental picture, right, there's no chart that says sell off this business, all right? So it's more like, one transaction, multiple income. That is actually the game plan. And over here, we actually have a system. So I'm not going to go through this system, all right? Just to share with you, uh, just to sidetrack from the game a bit, just to share with you how I will actually, how as an investor, I will actually decide which stock I should buy and which stock I should sell or should not invest altogether. So personally, I use a system and it is actually represented in a quadrant like this. So typically, the quadrant consists of four parts. The first one is that I will look into the stock's business model. The second one, the financial records. The third one, I will actually look at, look at its growth prospects or its uh, initiatives to grow in the future. And finally, I will use valuation. I will calculate the valuation ratios in order to decide whether or not the stock is undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. So if the stock is undervalued, then I will consider buying. If let's say the stock is crazily overvalued, then I will probably sell off the stock. So that is actually my system. Okay, so now we have cleared uh, step number one, which is to know which is which is about the system, the objectives and the system. So here we have clearly defined that our objective is to build a portfolio. It's an investment portfolio. It consists of fundamentally solid stocks. It is going to be held for the long term and uh, we buy to keep and not to and not to trade okay so that is actually the so that is actually step number 1 now we move on to step number 2 okay so step number 2 is this so guys imagine that you have your own portfolio like how i like uh, like what we I, like what i have actually just shared with you on the screen so we have a portfolio like the one that i show you the 10 stocks so the first step okay the first step what we're going to do is we're going to separate the stocks based on capital gains and losses, okay? So the first step is to separate them. Which of these stocks, uh, which of these stocks have achieved capital gains and which of these stocks um, have incurred some form of capital losses, all right? So with that, let's quick, let me just quickly demonstrate how it's done uh, on the spreadsheet. Okay, so what we're going to do here is that we are going to just uh, duplicate. Okay, so this is, so I'm going to rename this as, as step two. All right, so S2 stands for step two. So let me just go through, review this, uh, this process. So number one, as you can see, guys, you are looking at my screen, right? All right, so let me just continue. Huh? So let's say, for example, this is actually the cost. So this is actually the current price. So the cost is two ringgit and 30 cents. The current price is $3 and three ringgit and 26 cents. So in this case, this one, um, it is actually capital gains, right? So here you have, so here as an investor, as a fund manager who inherits this portfolio, this stock, Awesome Bahad, you have capital gains. So we will just put this CG at this point in time. All right, capital gains. The next one is actually best per heart. So best per heart, the cost is one ringgit and 67 cents. The current price is 61 cents. So therefore this is actually capital loss. So here we are gonna put CL, okay? So the, first, so the second step after you have established your objectives and systems is to separate your, port, your entire portfolio of stocks into two categories, into CG and into CL. So let's continue with the final eight step and final eight stocks. So the third stock is actually Cool Berhad. So the cost is one ringgit and 50 cents. The current price is 35 cents. So this is CL. 
So dashing, cost is 11. Uh, the current price is 13 ringgit and 10 cents. So this is CG. Flower Bahad, uh, cost is 4 ringgit 80 cents. Now it is actually priced at 4 ringgit 68. So this is CL. Good Bahad, 6 ringgit to 5 ringgit and 12 cents. So this is CL. Intelligent Bahad, cost is 2, two ringgit. The current price is 4 ringgit 28 cents. So this is actually CG. Jackson Bahad, $12. Now it's $8.67. So this is CL. Kelly Bahad, uh, 2 ringgit 80 cents. Now it's two fifty. dollars So this is CG. Leopard Bahad, um, $14.17. Now it's actually $15.26. So this is CG. I think I made a mistake here. Kelly Bahad is two eighty dollars down to two fifty. dollars So this is supposed to be CL. All right. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna just uh, I'm just gonna so from from over here, what we are gonna do is that I'm gonna just take this, I'm gonna just take this out, take all the CL. Sorry, I shouldn't be taking the CL. Let's take the CG out first. Okay, so this is the CG. Let's take all the CG. Put it down here. Okay. So over here, let's do a little bit of uh so here I'm gonna just put okay, I'm gonna just alter the formula over here. All right, so this is actually all the CG, all the capital gain stocks. Now I'm going to delete all of them. So this one I'm going to delete because it's CG. So I'm going to split. What I'm going to do here is, is that I'm going to just split all the CG uh, from the CL. And then finally, I'm going to just do this. Just bear with me. Okay. All right, guys. So here is actually what I have done in step number two. So this is actually the current portfolio that you have inherited. So the first step is to just, uh, is to just uh, what you call, is to separate the, the, CL, the CL stocks from the CG stocks. So now what we can see here is that this is actually the CL one. The reason why is at on top is simply because it is actually more important for us to actually address them first because that is the one that is more mustaha, which is more important. Whereas the CG ones, the capital gain one, the capital gains one, you can actually like delay. You can actually do that later because you're already uh, enjoying capital gains. All right. So you can actually deal with that later. So the ones that is CL, all right, as you can see, the ones that are CL, you have actually invested 37,650 ringgit into this uh, into these six stocks, whereby the market value has dropped from 37,000 to 25 over thousand. If you look at the annual dividend income is 588 ringgit and 50 cents. So the pop, so the dividend yield from all these CL stocks, right, is only 1.56%. Whereas if you look at the CG stocks, um, here you have actually invested 24,000, but now the market value is actually $34,500. And you're getting about 1,000 ringgit in uh, dividends. So therefore your dividend yield is actually not too bad at 4.42%, okay? So which means to say the CG stocks are more productive in terms of dividends as compared to the CL stocks. So that is actually uh, step number two, okay? So I know that you guys are excited to play the game, but this is actually found, but this is actually foundational to actually a stepping stone towards the game. Okay, so with that, let me just go back. All right. So guys, I've actually spoken quite a lot. 
Um, perhaps you can actually type in the chat box. How many of you are actually following through the game and following through this webinar session? Maybe you can put that thumbs up or something like that. Just give me a feedback so that, uh, so that I'm actually uh, quite sure that you guys are actually following this session. Everyone okay? Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Right now, let's go into step number three. Okay. So now we have the CL stocks and the CG stocks. CG stocks, the capital gain stocks, we do we deal with it later. Now we start with the CL stocks, okay? The capital losses, the stocks that have capital losses. So for me, the first, so for me, the, after you have done that, the next step, which is step number three, right? I believe is this, which is the separate stocks, all right? From the six stocks, now we are going to separate the stocks with capital losses based on their fundamental strength. Ah, okay, based on the fundamental, based on the fundamental strength. Okay, so here, so here is how it works. Now I'm gonna explain the rules of this. Now we are about to, in two minutes time, we are gonna play this game, but I'm gonna explain the rules. Huh? So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna simplify the stock research or the stock, the study of your stocks, all right? So actually the six stocks, right? Technically speaking, we need to do a little bit of study before we decide on the fundamentals. But here I give you a simplified version, okay? So for me as a game master, I will prepare two slides containing info of each of these stocks, six of them in total. So slide number one is about the 10-year earning figures of the stock. Slide number two is about the 10-year operating cash flow figure of the stock. So after I have shown you the two slides, what you will do is to vote, okay? To vote and to decide whether you should buy, I know, whether you should, whether you should, this time it's not buy, whether or not you should hold or whether you should sell off the stocks, okay? So now there's no buying decision, it's just holding and selling, okay? It's keeping or selling, that's all, all right? So that's actually the rules. So right now, let me, so let's just, Start the game. Let's let the games begin. So let's just uh, do this for one stock. Then after that, we'll do it quickly for the five stocks. Okay. So let's start off with Best Per Hut. I'm going to give you some information about Best Per Hut and then we decide. Best Per Hut. So inside the portfolio, we have 5,000 units. Uh, the average cost that you have purchased is one ringgit and 67 cents. Now the current price is 61 cents. Okay. 167 now is down to 61 cents, okay? So the latest 12 months earnings of this stock is negative 90.8 cents, which means uh, it didn't make money. Lah. It actually incurred losses. And over the last 12 months, it paid no dividends. So this is actually the first slide. This is actually the 10 years earnings of Best Per Heart. So as you can see, it, it were, um, the profits are as followed. It has a kind of like decline in 2012 to 2014. Then, in the, then after that, it increased uh, from, from 83 million all the way to 2 billion in 2018. And then it incurred massive losses in 2019, 2020, and 2021. So that is actually the 10 years figure of Best Per Heart. And when it comes to the operating cash flow, it's actually something like this. So as you can see, Anything above is positive, which means to say in 2012, uh, Best Per Heart has actually generated $1.3 billion in operating cash flow. And if let's say if based on the 2020 figures, as you can see, it's on the opposite direction. Um, this means that it has actually incurred $2.168 uh, billion in operating cash outflow. Okay, So anything above is cash inflow. Anything below is cash outflow, money going out, all right? So that is actually the case for Best Berhad. So guys, time to vote. Would you hold or would you sell Best Berhad? Yes or no? Type in the chat box right now. Shane, let's monitor the response. So what does the audience say? 90% mm, say sell. 90% say sell. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, best per heart. Let me just drop down best per heart. 
So I will execute the order, which is to sell. All right. So majority decides that we are going to sell this stock. Fair enough. Let's sell off this stock. Okay, I have jot down the, I have jot down the responses. Sell. Let's move on to the next stock, Cool Berhad. So Cool Berhad, uh, we have three thousand units. The average per, the average cost is one ringgit and fifty cents. Current price is now thirty five cents. Latest twelve months earnings is eleven point two eight cents. And uh, latest twelve months dividends, it pays no dividends at the moment. So this is Cool Berhad. This is the 10 years earnings figure. All right, as you can see, the earnings has increased from 25.6 million all the way up to 91.3 million. And then it kind of like dip a little bit to the 70, 75 million range over the last two years. So this is Cool Berhad, 10 years earnings figure. And right now what I'm showing you is Cool Berhad's 10 year operating cash flow figures. So as you can see, uh, the operating cash flow uh, over here, it has brought in 134.9 million. And then uh, over time, it doesn't make much uh, operating cash flow. It kind of like incurs um, operating cash outflow. All right, so guys, who will hunt? decide? Should you hold or should you sell? Would you hold or would you sell cool Berhad? Type in the chat box, let us know. Shane, what do you think? What, what does the audience say about cool Berhad? Let me allow them some time to type in response, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I see a lot of selling. Okay. I also think like 80% say sell. Okay lah. I also see that the, I also see that the, a lot of people say sell. So I'm gonna just say I'm gonna just uh, execute the transaction because majority of the people here decide to sell. So therefore, let's just sell off Cool Berhad. Now let's move on to Flower Berhad. So Flower Berhad, we have one thousand five hundred units. The average cost is four ringgit and eighty cents. The current price is four ringgit and sixty eight cents. Latest 12 months earnings is 28.63 cents. The latest 12 month dividends is actually 15.7 cents. Okay, so this is actually Flower Berhad. Now let's look at the 10 years earnings figure. So this is how it looks like. All right, I'm not gonna just uh, explain. I'm just gonna let the graph do, do all the talking. So this is the 10 year earnings figure. And this is the 10 year operating cash flow figure. All right, guys, would you want to hold or would you want to sell Flower Berhad based on its fundamentals? So, so Shane, what do the people say? Mm, allow them some time, huh? Yeah. I would say 99% say hold. Okay, so when it comes to Flower Berhad, we just hold. Okay, fine. Thank you so much for your response. All right, so once again, the, the operating cash flow is actually like this, All right? So that is actually Flower Berhad. Now let's move on to Good Berhad. Good Berhad, okay? Good Berhad, units, number of units, 1,000 units. Uh, average cost, six ringgit. Current price, 5 ringgit and 12 cents. Latest 12 months earnings, 10.59 cent, 10 cents. Latest 12 months dividends, 3.5 .5 cents. So this is actually the 10-year the earnings of Good Berhad. Let the graph do the talking. Give you 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is the operating cash flow of Good Berhad. All right. Once again, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Guys, would you hold or would you sell Good Berhad? Put it in the chat box. Let me know. So Shane, what do what does the people say? Mm. 
I think ninety percent say whole. Okay, ninety five percent say whole. Ninety five percent say whole. Let's just yeah. hold lah. All right. Let's and just one hold. person say buy more. <laughs> let's just say, let's just hold for now. All right. Let's just hold for now because the majority say hold. Fine. Let's hold. Now next, let's look at Jackson Berhad. Ah, uh, Jackson Berhad. Here we have 500 units of Jackson Berhad. Average cost that you have purchased is 12 ringgit. The current price is 8, 8 ringgit and 67 cents. Latest 12 months earnings is 63.75 cents. Dividends 40 cents. Jackson Berhad. Interesting. So this is actually the earnings for Jackson Berhad. I'm going to let the graph do the talking. All right. But here, very clearly, we can see that. Um, here we can see two halves, all right? 2014 to 2017, it seems that Jackson Berhad is making about six to seven billion dollars. And then 2018 to 2021, it seems that the company, uh, the earnings have actually, uh, it's actually between the three to four billion range. So one is at the six, seven billion range. The other one, uh, the other four years is actually at a three, four billion range. Okay, so that's Jackson Berhad. Now, this is actually the operating cash flow. So this is actually how it looks like. All right. Seems that the uh, operating cash flow is actually quite positive. Okay, guys, time to vote. Would you decide on Jackson Bahat? Would you hold or would you sell off the company? So Shane, how does the people decide? I think 70% say whole. 70% of the people say whole. Huh? Okay, this time around not so clear cut. Huh? So, but then Shane, most people say whole, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it. Huh? Okay, lah. So since uh, there are some people who say sell, but most of the people say hold. So at this stage, uh, so at this stage, uh, let's just hold. Uh, all right, Jackson Berhad. We just hold on to Jackson Berhad for now. All right. And then let's move on to the final stock that is on the capital loss stage, which is Kelly Berhad. So Kelly Berhad, number of units, 2,000 units. Average cost of purchase is two. Um, Two ringgit eighty cents. Current price two ringgit fifty cents. Latest twelve months earnings is uh twenty five point nine seven cents. Latest twelve months dividends is actually five point nine cents. So this is actually the earnings figure. All right, from twenty seven million go up to ninety three million. Then this is the operating cash flow of Kelly Berhad which is, uh, there's only one negative year, but the rest is actually positive. So with that, let's do the, so let's do the, what do you call, the final voting. Should you hold or should you sell uh, Kelly Berhad? So Shane, any, any uh, response from the audience? I think it appears that Ho has more than two third majority. <laughs> okay, so with that, so with that, I think we have, uh, I think we have actually covered, all right, step number three. So the so the third step is to actually identify stocks that are fundamentally poor, and then we will get rid of it, and then those that are fundamentally strong or solid, then we still keep it in our portfolio. So with that, I'm going to go into my portfolio and do the transaction right now for you guys, okay? So with that, let me just duplicate this uh, portfolio. I'm going to name this as step three. So here is how it works. What happened is that, so over here, so we have capital recoup. Right, so what happened is that over here, we decided to, so let me just jot down your responses. 
So Best Berhad, we decided to sell. Cool Berhad, we decided to sell. And then the rest, the final four, we decided to hold at this point in time. So what happened is that Best Berhad, okay, what we will do is that we will recoup that, we will recoup 3,050 3, ringgit. Whereas for Cool Berhad, we will, we will recover 1,000 and uh, five ringgit at the moment, okay? So with that, these two, these two over here, let's just vanish it, okay? And of course, over here, I'll do the honors. So here is more like that form. I five. Just one second. All right. So this is so now this sounds very right. So what happened is what happened, guys, is that we have sold off best Berhad and cool Berhad, and we will stick to flower Berhad, good, good Berhad, Jackson Berhad, and Caddy Berhad for now, based on their fundamentals alone. Okay. So with that. The capital recoup is actually 4,000 ringgit and 100, 4,100 ringgit so far. Okay, so with that, let's go back to the slides and we are going to start another, another round of uh, buy, hold, or sell. All right. So this is actually the current state of your portfolio. So once you have inherited the portfolio, the first step is to get rid of anything which is poor in terms of its fundamentals. And then with that, right, then your portfolio is only filled with all the fundamentally solid stocks. So that is actually step one, two, and three. Now we are going to go into step number four. So step number four is this. From this uh, capital losses, uh, okay, from this capital losses, the question is that, uh, the question is this. We will actually separate the stocks with capital losses. Now we will decide based on their valuation. Okay. Um, so which means to say, if we find that the stock is still, maybe the, the stock, the fundamentals are okay, but then the valuation is not so okay, we will still sell. Okay. If you find that the valuation is still all right, then we will keep. Okay. So with that, let's begin with the game. So I'm going to explain the rules. And I'm going to just have a slight disclosure because uh, there's one particular company we need to rewind back. I didn't prepare that slide, particular slide. All right, because there's a stock that uh, I believe I will would sell, but then the majority actually put hold. So I need to uh, like go back to that slide again. Lah. All right, so which means to say, I as a game master, I have one stock which I back, which I which uh, I'm in a different opinion than the majority, all right? But anyway, here's the, here's the rules of this, this part of the game. So the game master, which is me, will share the following details. Number one, the current price. Number two, the latest 12 months EPS, which is the earnings per share. Number three, I will give you the lowest, the average and the highest PE ratio, okay? Lowest PE ratio usually is when the stock is most undervalued. Average means fairly valued, and then the highest PE ratio is overvalued. So attendees, which is you guys, the investors, the fund managers, shall work to decide buy, hold, or sell after, after the slides has been shown. So I'm going to go with the first stock, and then we'll play on with the second, third, and the fourth stock. All right? So here we go. So this is Flower Berhad. Okay? So guys, Flower Berhad. We have uh, 1,500 units. Average cost is 4 ringgit and 80 cents. Current price is 4 ringgit and 68. So the latest 12 months is actually 28.68 cents. Okay. So right now, what happened is that you may want to... So here's the tip to play the game. What you want to do is to uh, calculate the current PE ratio. And then from there, you compare with the lowest average and highest. And from there, you decide whether, whether or not you want to keep Flower Berhad 
or you don't want to keep flower behind. Okay. So I'll guide you through the first one, then maybe the second and third one, you can play, all right? You can play independently. So this one, I'll do it semi-independent with you guys, okay? So the current price is actually 4 ringgit and 68 cents. You want to calculate the PE ratio, you just take 4 ringgit and 68 cents divided by 28.63 cents. So guys, how many of you get the answer PE ratio is 16.35? Any one of you get actually that, that, uh, that figure? Yeah? All right. So if you get 16.346, now you compare it with the lowest average and high. And then just now remember flower the, the, the what do you call the fundamentals. These are really good, fun, fundamentally good companies. Now you decide whether or not you want to keep or you want to sell off this company. So guys, time to vote. Would you want to buy more? Would you want to hold? Or would you want to sell, or, sell off Flower Berhad? Shane, maybe you can give us the, the verdict. What say the audience? What say our investors? I think Ho still has more than two-third majority. Okay, fair enough. So, so over here, we will just say, let's just hold on to the, let's just hold on to Flower Bahad. So Flower Bahad, we will keep. Next, let's talk about Good Bahad. Okay, so just now I've actually shown you. Now I just explain another, another part of the game. How do you know that if you have actually uh, purchased it at the wrong price? So what you can do is that if you want to do a little bit of post-mortem on your site, so what you can do is that you take the cost, average cost that you have purchased for a certain stock like Good Berhad, let's say six ringgit, you divide it by the, the past uh, 12 months earnings per share at that time, then you will know whether or not you have actually over, whether you have actually purchased the stock at a much overvalued price. So that is actually just a sidetrack. That's just a tip if you want to do your own post-mortem. So right now, Good Berhad is as followed. So we are, going, we are going to continue on with the game. So this is Good Berhad. What we are going to do is this. The current price is 5 ringgit and 12 cents. Latest 12 months earnings is 10.59 cents. Uh, we, we have the lowest, the average, and the highest PE ratio. So guys, first and foremost, what is your PE ratio? Let's put it in the chat box so that everyone can, everyone gets the right PE ratio. So Noiza says 48.35. How many of you are actually getting 48.35? Put it in the chat box. Yeah, so, so there are quite a number of you guys actually put in 48.35. Correct, correct, 48.35. So Eun Sing Hock, you are, I think you're using average cost divided by latest 12 months of earnings. All right, so that, that's why you get 56.65. Uh, but here you are just revaluing the stock based on the current price. So therefore, right now you should get 48.35. Now you compare with this, okay? The lowest, the average, and the highest, okay? So with that, let's do some voting. How many of you want to buy whole or sell off good Berhad. Guys, time to vote. Let me know. All right, Shane, looks like most people say sell, right? Yeah. Okay, it I appear so. I appear so. Yeah, I only see a couple of whole, but tens of tens of them. Uh, have already voiced out saying that it's a sell. So therefore, I'm going to just say sell. All right. So thank you so much for your participation. Now let's move on. So this is Kelly Berhard. Now I'm going to let you decide on your own. First, if you have actually calculated the latest PE ratio based on the carbon price, put it in the chat box so that I know that you get the correct answer. All right, Jennifer Louis. Jennifer Louis has actually said, 
has actually calculated that the PE ratio is 9.63. How many of you are getting 9.63? Okay. So guys, the correct answer is 9.63, all right? Where you take the current price, which is two ringgit and 50 cents, and then you divide it by 25.97 cents. Okay, so with that, right, you can actually decide whether you can actually now compare. Now you can actually compare with the lowest average and highest PE ratio. And then uh, you can start voting. Okay, so I think everyone know the drill already. So guys, uh, do the voting and then let me know what's the, what's the result. So Shane, maybe you can actually review to us what, what say the audience. Give them a 10 more seconds. Huh? Mm, 10 more seconds. Huh? So most people say, so it seems that uh, it seems that buy has simple majority. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it seems that buy has simple majority. So I'm gonna just put buy slash hold. Uh. So could be the first stock to buy back. All right, but anyway, we'll just put that buy. Now let's go back to Jackson Berhart, where I don't have the slide for you, where I don't have the chart for you, but let's see. Uh. Because most of because the majority has decided on Jackson, huh? So let's see what Jackson has to offer. Okay. So I don't have the average. All right. So this is actually Jackson. Mm, yellow. Uh, I can only. So you. It's just more like a practice session. How many of you can actually calculate the? current PE ratio of Jackson Berhad. Put it in the chat box. All right, so let's see, let's review your answers. And then, uh, then from there, let's just uh, move on. Okay, so most of you are getting 13.6. Huh? Okay, good, good. So over here, because I don't have the slides, all right, apologies to that. All right, the question is how many of you here, so I will just go through a simple word for time's sake. How many of you here decided to keep this stock and how many of you decided to sell this stock? Let's do this one more round and then we'll end. All right, so once again, the, vote, the voting is actually open. Time to say, would you buy more, hold or sell? So what say the audience? It's a mix of response. Mix of response are because my response is also inside. <laughs> okay, so let me see. Yeah. Looks like this is like the uh, political situation right now. <laughs> the vote is split. <laughs> the vote is split. Okay, la, for this sake, right. For this sake, uh, I won't touch. Let's just uh, hold on to Jackson Berhard right now. Is it fair to say that? Mm, okay. All right. So let's yeah. just say... Let's just hold on to it for now. La. The three right. corner fight. Three corner fight looks three like. Three corner fight. But of course, I did not count one by one. La. Appears that it's three corner fight. <laughs> three corner fight. Okay. La. So let's just hold it for now. Everyone has their own say. Everyone has their own opinion. All right. Yeah, I should have actually prepared one more slide for Jackson Berhard. La. Yeah, so that one, uh, that one is actually my, on my part. La. All right. So the question is, we are going to hold on to we are going to hold on to uh, Jackson Berhad. So guys, I'm going to go back to the slides and then uh, I'm going to do the transaction. So let's duplicate the slide. So here, this is actually step four. All right. So over here, we have sold two stocks, but then uh, we, we decided to hold Okay, we decided to hold onto the stock. And here we decided to sell. 
So this one, the first one is actually, so this one is based on fundamentals. This one is based on valuation, All right? So here, guys, if you see here, the first one is that no matter how, the first step is to always look at fundamentals. If the fundamentals is wrong, whatever price just sell, finish, all right? End story. Because, because uh, if you have a, let's say you go marketing in a, in a wet market, stinking fish, smelly fish, no matter what price, it still smells. Just throw it away. All right, so just don't just uh, just get rid of your smelly fish. That's the first step. Second one is that from the good fishes, then we then if we think that this one is still overpriced, we will actually we will also sell it away. All right, we only keep, or um, we may actually buy more of those that are undervalued, or either either fairly valued or undervalued. All right, so here let me just do the, let me just do the take. Um, so Jackson Burhardt. Is this Jackson Berhard? So Jackson Berhard, we will hold. And then final one is actually we will either buy or hold. Okay, so which means over here, I'm gonna just, uh, sorry, I'm gonna just put in five, one, two, zero. And for good Berhard, for good Berhard, we kind of like show off. So guys, therefore we have now recouped back 9,000, 9,220 ringgit, okay? So this one, I think I will change. This will be I6 plus, I8 plus, I9, all right. Okay, so these are the three stocks that we will keep. And now we have 9,220 ringgit, fresh capital, recoup, all right? So that is actually after four steps. Now let's move on to the fifth step, which, we, which is we're about to come to the end of this webinar session, all right? Step number five, with that 9,000 ringgit that we have recouped, so it's time for us to reinvest the capital recovered into stocks that have better fundamentals and valuation. Okay, so now there are two main options available. Okay, so this is actually the two main options available. The first one is that you can actually average down on existing stocks. Like for example, some of you actually put in Kelly Berhard. Kelly Berhard seems to be a, a good stock to actually average down. So that's actually one way of looking at it. The second one is that um, the second one is that you can actually buy new stocks which have better fundamentals and better valuation. So let's say, for example, uh, in Malaysia, I in uh, on Bursa Malaysia, I think um, there are certain stocks that could actually offer 5% in dividend yield. All right. So now these are the two main options. Just want to get the opinion from the floor. All right, maybe you can type in the percentage, okay? So 9,200, uh, how about this? We put a percentage. Um, for those of you who want to average down, who those who, of you who want to average down, just put there 100% uh, slash zero, okay? So which means to say 100% or 100% Kelly, 0%, uh, 5% dividend yield. If let's say you are into buying new stocks, you put zero Kelly, 100%, uh, 5%, 100%, 5%, all right? If let's say you want to split it 50-50, all right? Let's say you want to have 50 Kelly, 50, 50, uh, 50 new stocks, just put it in the chat box or any percentage. Or let's just keep it to 100%, 100% here, 100% there, and 50-50, only these three choices. So let's see the response. How many of you? Let's see uh, what says all of you. So Shane, what is the response? What is the response from the audience? I 
I think we have more 50-50. More 50-50, yeah? Okay, so let's just do 50-50 for now. All right, so let's do 50-50. Like that, I'm going to just duplicate the stock again. This will be step number five, where we are going to reinvest these stocks into, into uh, stocks that are, you know, that are more productive. So here, what I will do is that I'll add one more row. Okay. So here, what we'll do is that we'll add another row over here. Okay, so this will be seven. So here we'll have Kelly Berhad, new transaction. This will be over here. So 50 50, yeah. So which means to say the current price is 250. Okay. What we'll do is that we will split the capital. So we have 4,000. So I'm going to use my own calculator. 9,220, we divide it by two, which is 4,006. And then we divide it by two ringgit and 50 cents. So let's say we are going to buy 1,800 units. So the total investment would be, of course the cost and the current price would be the same because we buy it like today. So all this will be the same. Okay, so now we have an answer. Okay, so this is one. So now your overall view, uh, overall dividend yield for this uh, capital loss portfolio has increased. Now over here we will invest the remaining five percent, the remaining uh, capital into the five percent dividend yield. So here it's already four thousand five. We'll just take uh, nine thousand two hundred, which is uh, L eleven minus of uh, I-10, okay? So the dividend income is actually it's the same. Uh, over here, we have I-20 times 0 Okay, so guys, we have actually restructured our portfolio. So I'm gonna just give you uh, the final figures that what we have done today. The first one is that uh, for the total investment, um, currently what is invested is actually I-11 plus I-12. So you have actually invested 52,160 ringgit into it. Fair value right now is this, still 60,000, it's supposed to be the same. Um, the annual dividend income has now increased to 1,963 ringgit and 70 cents. So therefore your dividend yield right now okay, is actually based on what you have invested. So Let's say K25, you divide it by I25, percentage, 3.67%. So let's compare with the current. So the overall, overall dividend yield is 2.68%. Right now, after we have actually gone through the five steps, your overall dividend yield has increased to 3.76%. All right, congratulations, guys. So with that, let's go through. So I believe we have actually covered the five steps. So let me just quickly recap to you so that you will find this useful. So this is actually um, a systematic way to actually optimize your portfolio. The first one is that you have to uh, really review back your investment objectives. And number two, the first step to it is to separate the capital gains one with the capital loss one. The third one is that if you happen to buy a stock whereby the fundamentals is poor, sell that one off first. 
Then after that, we move on to the next one, which is sometimes the fundamental stocks that we buy can be good, but then we bought it at a way overpriced. But maybe we bought it at a, at a very, very overvalued price. So with that, you may want to sell that off if it continues to be overvalued. Then last but not least, you may want to reinvest your capital that you have recovered into better fundamental stocks. All right, so this is actually my strategy, my own uh, system of uh, optimizing a portfolio. So guys, I, so that's it for today. Uh, right now I'm open for Q&A. Perhaps you can type in the questions in the, in the Q&A box. And uh, with that, thank you so much for having me. Shane, back to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ian, for doing this webinar in such an interactive way. So if you have any questions to ask our speaker, aka Game Master today, please write them in the Q&A box and we will address them. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think I got the first question is, write them in the Q&A box, I'll write them in the Q&A box, okay? Not the chat box. So I can easily manage your questions, okay? If you write in the chat box, I may overlook it. So first question is, how do you get the uh, average low and the highest PE? Uh? All right, so I'm going to just go all the way back. So let's say this is Kelly Berhat. Uh. This is the 10 years earnings. Uh. So can you see that for the past 10 years, uh, it has the earnings figure, right? So every year got, so every year got earnings, ma, which means to say got earnings per share uh, for every single year. Then every single year, let's say, for example, the close, the financial year end for 2012 is actually uh, is actually December 31st, 2012. So what I will do is that uh, I will take the closing stock price for 2012 and divide it by the earnings per share at 2012. And then I will do the same for 2013, 14, 15, all the way up to 2021. So from there, you will have 10 sets of PE ratio. And from there, you, will, you can actually calculate uh, you can actually find out which one is the lowest, which one is the highest, and then you can just uh, easily do the average 10 years. Lah. All right. So that is actually how I do, how I get the lowest average and the highest PE ratio for every single stock. As long as it's profitable. Yeah. Okay. You do it manually, right? Manually. Correct. Okay. Okay. Please write your question in Q&A. Yeah. Don't write in the chat box. Okay. <laughs> Please uh, write your question in the Q&A box, you know, so we can easily manage it. Mm -hmm. All right. While you do that, uh, in perhaps I can ask for a feedback. Uh, how many of you think that, uh, how many of you like this kind of style of, uh, of a webinar? Uh, I know that there, there are rooms for improvement when it comes to uh, the delivery of this game or maybe the presentation of the game. Uh, I, also, I also learned that, hey, there are certain things that I should learn because I know that there are certain, certain, uh, certain, bloop, certain blips in the game also. It's a good, it's a <laughs> so it's also a learning curve for me. But uh, how many of you like this? Put it in the chat box while you put in the questions as well. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your response. Maybe as I read the response, perhaps questions? Yeah. The next question is by Adrian. Does your method only applies to large caps or blue chip stocks? Um, this method works for investors, not traders, not speculators. All right. It matters. This method only applies to stocks that are profitable, number one, consistently profitable. Okay. Means it's something like you see on Kelly Berhad then can, then yes, okay? Then this will work very good. However, if let's say you have a stock like, let's say, if you have a stock, let's say like, uh, like, 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 okay, like for example, Flower Berhad, yes, it will work for Flower Berhad. But if you, but if let's say you have Cool Berhad where the operating cash flow is like this, then of course it doesn't work very well for these kind of companies. And as well as uh, Best Berhad, if you can see here, the profits are volatile, okay? Goes up, comes down, unpredictable. And then we have incur big losses like this. Then of course, it's not going to work lah, because uh, this formula, this whole game plan, right? Is designed only for stocks that are profitable. 
So I wouldn't say large cap or blue chips only. Some blue chips don't have this. Some blue chips are not consistently profitable anyway. Yeah. All right. The next question is uh, Ahmad Johari. In real life, at times, the amount recouped may partially be used for personal purpose. So how much minimum is advisable for reinvestment? Oh, that one, I'm not too sure what... Uh, okay, some personal purposes could be... Could be... Uh, it right. can be an emergency. It can be your kids' education. It can be to put down the, the down payment for your house. That one is up to you already because uh, I, I can't actually advise how much you, you should actually uh, take out because that one is personal, right? Because uh, since it's personal, so it's personal, all right? How much minimum is advisable for reinvestment? That one, I'm not too sure, depending on your financial status. So uh, unless you pay me, maybe you can type in a, a scenario, then uh, perhaps I can answer you better lah, because without a scenario, it's a bit harder for me to, to conceptualize the thing and then uh, to give a much more accurate answer. Yeah. All right. So Rama Sami would like to ask, uh, even if we can get a 5% dividend yield, right? But if the share price still go down, so what do we do? Okay, the first thing is that uh, it's not so much about the 5% dividend yield, but you must have a fundamentally solid stocks that pay 5% dividend yield. So that is actually the first one, all right? So as long as uh, your portfolio is filled with all the fundamentally solid stocks, the stock price, it doesn't matter whether it goes up or comes down. If it comes down even better, you should actually consider uh you should actually consider why why it comes down and then if it's good if the fundamentals is intact or uh, it's heaven for investors yeah so you shouldn't be worried uh, where you shouldn't be worried if let's say from an investor's point of view shouldn't be worried if let's say the stock prices come down you should be happy lah. but of course this is very counter emotional right so um so the thing here is that uh we are not here trying to trade for like buy $1, sell at $2. You want, at the end of the investment game, how many stocks of Kelly Berhad would you, would you have accumulated after years of investing? That would be a very, very good aim. Yep. Mm, okay, thank you so much, Ian. Mm -hmm. The next question is by David Yong. Do you practice portfolio weightage? And what is the maximum percentage that you allow for a stock? Maximum. So let's see. Yeah. So like, uh, let's take life champ portfolio management so far. So as we can see over here. So this is stock number five. So the rateage could be based on your total investment or it could be based on market value. But let's say we just take total investment, for example. As you can see, the total investment for each share is 7,000, 6,000, 5, 4. Maybe this two is the same. Yeah, this two is the same share. So this one is like 10,000. 7, 6, uh, here about 10. Then here is 5, 5, 6, 7. So I would say this is actually quite, and here is 4. So I would say this is actually quite uh, balanced. All right. So maybe, um, so I would say that this is actually pretty okay for the time being, but I would say that portfolio building and portfolio management is an ongoing thing. So it evolves over time. So right now the portfolio, the size is about 50, 60,000. So when it comes to 50, 60,000, right, then uh, I would say this size would be good, more than good enough. But eventually if it goes up to 100,000, then maybe you will have more shares or maybe you will have, uh, maybe you will actually, um, you will allocate a little bit more investment into your existing stocks. So this one will make your, your weightage per stock to go up, all right? So this one is an art. Uh, there's no fix and, there's no hard and fix, there's no hard and fixed rule for this, lah, all right? Uh, so you don't need to be super accurate when it comes to this. What's more important is that your, your, the fundamentals of the stock that you buy is good. That one is very important. Right, mm. All right, thank you so much. Lydia would like to ask, how regular do you review your portfolio in this volatile market? The thing is that because uh, our, our purpose, okay, 
The reason why we go, the reason why we build an investment portfolio is because the mentality that we have is that we are not a trader. We are business people. We are like, we, we, we are people, we are actually owning businesses. So in order to review the performance, uh, for me, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily like uh, review the, the performance based on stock price. Because if you review the, the stock based on stock price, right? If the stock price go down, you will, you will feel very bad, lah, all right? You will feel lousy lah, because the stock price actually go down. And then you will feel good if the stock price goes up. So stock price, so I didn't actually measure the, the performance of the stock based on stock prices. Rather, I will actually measure the stock performance based on its latest earnings. So I will just like, update myself on its latest happenings, the latest earnings. Uh, from there, I will decide, okay, after I, let's say, for example, I buy Kelly Berhad and it continues to generate uh, consistent growth in profits. So let's say, for example, let's go to Kelly Berhad. Okay. So Kelly Berhad, we actually, so it actually make 93, $93 million. So as a business person, we will, we kind of like value the company based on $93 million. So if let's say Kelly Berhad make somewhere near 90, 90 million, 90 million or 95 million or 100 million, then I would say the performance of Kelly Berhad is good regardless of the price. However, if Kelly Berhad somehow rather over time, it actually, uh, the profits actually drop all the way to 50 million, then uh, something is actually amiss somewhere. Lah. Then you have to actually investigate why Kelly Berhad actually, um, as a business, it has actually reported 50 million. So the thing is that uh, we will actually measure it based on the profits. Oh? Because uh, PE ratio, right? We calculate PE ratio. So PE ratio is actually useful if you are basing it on, if let's say we are basing it on 90 million, then we hope if you are valuing it based on 90 million, then we hope that the company will continue to make 90 million year after year. So that's how I measure stock performance. Uh, every three months once. Uh. Mm, okay, every three months once. Uh. Mm -hmm. The next question is by KC. Yep. If a stock's PE ratio is low, but the operating cash flow is negative, should we consider buying the stock? If the stock PE ratio is low, but the operating cash flow is negative. Um, because my, my here's my take. Huh? Okay, for me, there are stocks. You see, like, uh, there's a real stock, you know? So this is actually, there's a reason why I put in Cool Berhad, you see. You look at Cool Berhad, every year got, every year got earnings. Look at the earnings, so nice. But then when it comes to its operating cash flow, it looks something like this. Is it in a financing business? No. Something is a something. Uh, so I, I find this to be, I find I personally find that if profits are not backed by operating cash flow, uh, I wouldn't take a chance on it. Lah, because to me, right, if a company is consistently profitable, it should actually be bringing in consistent. Uh, consistent uh, cash flow from operations, all right? The operating cash flows must be positive. Cannot be a negative year after year one. It, like for example, if Kelly Berhad, right? For Kelly Berhad, let me see. Uh, like Kelly Berhad, very good profits. When it comes to operating cash flow, okay, maybe there's one year of negative uh, operating cash flow. But it cannot be every single year negative operating cash flow. Something is very wrong one. But actually, if let's say every year negative cash flow, right? Why would you want to buy that company? Like? So, so that is actually the so that so that's actually the, the point. Lah. So it doesn't matter on the valuation. If the cash flow is weak, it won't stand. Lah. So so which means to say, uh, to me as an investor, cash flow is very important. Must have positive one. No positive cash flow. So that means to say negative cash flow, good PE, no point one. Must have cash flow first. That, we, that only we talk about the PE. Mm. Yep. Okay. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is by Jennifer. So how do we look for fundamentally good companies? 
Well, of course, uh, well, of course, uh, what I would say is that you see, there's already tips, not to say tips, lah. I mean, there's like two insights. Lah. The reason why I do a 10 year earnings graph and a 10 years operating cash flow, cash flow graphs like this, right? It's already a sign, lah, all right? How I assess the how I assess a company, right, is based on the profits, it's also based on the operating cash flow. So that is actually the first two criteria already, lah. All right. But if you want a full assessment, right, you should actually look into this system over here. Okay. So, so it's actually summarized in a quadrant like this, where it consists of four things. Lah. The first one is the business model. The second one is the financial record. So the financial record got five things I look at. The sales, the earnings, the operating cash flow, the dividends, and then the debt level of the company. The third one is that I will look at whether or not the company has uh, any initiatives uh, or projects uh, to, to sustain its growth in the future, to expand whatsoever. Uh, all right. So that one is actually on the growth part because uh, as a dividend investor also, we want to earn growing dividends and we want sustainable capital appreciation. So we look at what are the, what are the projects that, are under, that the stock is undertaking in order to grow in the future. Then last but not least, we look at the valuation. So if you can see here, the reason why I say well, uh, cash flow is more important is simply because if you look at this system, right, the, the first one, the second one, the third one, it's actually, they are all related to the fundamentals of a stock. So it's like 75% of the system, right? It's very heavily skewed towards the fundamentals. Then the final one is valuation, which is the final 25%. Lah. So which means no fundamentals, no need to value. Got fundamentals, then only we value. Lah. So that's actually my take. All right. Thank you, Ian. Mm -hmm. uh, Kuhan would like to ask, is there a website where we can get historical data like EPS and DPS? Uh? Okay. I uh, think, uh, Ian, you're going to say from annual report, right? Well, Kuhan, I mean to say you can get it from all kinds of places. Lah, but then, uh, you know, it's our money, you know. Uh, whether it's 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, 1 million, it's our money. Uh, spend some time, lah, read some annual report because it's our money. Lah. So no need to go through all the screener, screener stuff. Lah. All right. But just to give you, a, just to give you uh, an idea to start off with, uh, if you do not know which stock to buy, right? Just, find, just, think, just, just think, where you spend your money right, could be where you want to invest your money. Lah. So if you have a good experience as a customer of a certain product, of a certain service, all right? And you like spending money over there, maybe that stock could be the one, maybe the company, the stock that owns the company could be the one that you want to invest into. Okay? That one, I'll leave you to decide how you should start, okay? You don't need to go with all the funny, funny stocks that you never heard before. You, know, you don't need to even go into stocks where, oh, you must be an expert in certain industry. Then only you can figure out the business model. You don't need to go into that. You go into the ones that you know first. The well, the, the, the ones that have good brand, the ones that you know, household names and all this kind of stuff. You start with that one first. Then only we, then, uh, then only we move. Yeah. Then from there, you decide. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you so much, Ian. And of course, for me, uh, you, you can refer to uh, www.bursamarketplace.com. Mm -hmm. So Bursa Malaysia is where you can download the annual report like what Ian described and where you can spend some time to understand the business inside out, the quality aspect of business and the quantity aspect of business, okay? Uh, but of course, if you have no time, okay, you may refer to bursamarketplace.com where you can find the five-year EPS or DPS data. So yeah, in Busan Marketplace, you can search for the stocks and you know the, the data from income statement balance sheet or cash flow statement will come out. Okay, mm. so it's a, a you know shortcut way. <laughs> All right, so um, I think we don't have any more time for question and answer. So let me just you know go to my screen if you may allow me, Ian. Yes, I have stop share. Yes, thank you so much, Ian, for doing this webinar, five steps to optimize your stock portfolio. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, for those of you who haven't checked out Bursa Academy on Bursa Academy, there are a lot of financial resources where you can uh, learn. You just scan the QR code here at the top bottom right corner or triple, or go to the website www.bursaacademy.bursamangaplace.com. So on the website, there are the, uh, investing articles, quizzes, coursework, videos, recording for you to watch to improve and increase your financial knowledge. For our next webinar, it is titled How to Spot the Tops and Bottoms of the Stock Market. So it is happening on the 15th September 2022. It's a Thursday. So uh, it is tomorrow. Yes, it is tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So uh, here is the link where you can register for this session. So if, if you want to learn how do we stop, uh, spot the tops and bottoms of the stock market, yes, see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. All right, so here's the link to register. I just put it in the chat group. So with that, I would like to thank Ian from uh, Kisila.com from Share Inverse, uh, the five step to optimize our stock portfolio. I'm sure that uh, many of you here have enjoyed the interactive games so far tonight. So yes, thank you so much, Ian. And I'm glad to play a little role in helping you to decide, you know, what's the verdict okay, of the crowd. Yes, uh, once again, thank you, Shane, and thank you, Shane, for inviting me here. Happy Malaysia Day! Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, bye, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy Malaysia Day. Bye bye.